Hi, this is Deboki, and today I'm going to be doing my reading wrap-up video for November 2016. Um, just a note, I am not actually sure when I'm posting this when I tape this. Um, I usually do my Not My Thesis videos, I usually post those on Sunday night, um, but the video that I recorded I just realized might need a little bit more editing and, uh, than I originally planned. So I might actually be posting this on Sunday night, which means my Not My Thesis will probably go up in the next uh, one to two days, hopefully if everything gets edited correctly. I'm still kind of figuring out how I want to do these wrap-ups because one of my goals is to start reviewing every book I read and I've gotten better about that. There are a few books that I'm going to talk about today that I haven't reviewed yet and I'm not quite sure if those reviews will happen but not because I don't want to review them I just kind of got backlogged and didn't get to writing or to doing the review for them and now I don't have the books with me because I checked them out from the library and so it's just a whole thing. Because I'm planning to do reviews for most of what I read probably at least my goal is to get reviews up for 90% of what I read. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to make these monthly wrap-ups not redundant. Um, I mean I think in some ways they're nice because they're, my reviews for books are much faster in this uh, compared to the actual review slash discussions that I do. But I just don't want to be posting things for the sake of posting them either so I'm kind of figuring out for me what's the best way to do, use these wrap-ups so that they actually help me kind of figure out what, what my month in reading was like. I think my goal is to kind of take a step back, do like maybe larger picture things, and this month what I'm going to try to do is actually more of a ranking of books. It's not going to be a strict ranking, it's going to be more categories that are ranked. So like starting with the books that I couldn't finish and ending with the books that I love so much that if I have enough money I will probably buy them one day. So starting with the larger picture, I basically had two categories of books this month. Um, with one exception. I basically this month read nonfiction or read a lot of romance and the nonfiction was actually perfectly timed with nonfiction November unfortunately because I didn't participate I didn't like kind of plan around it I'm not quite sure which books fit in which categories but it was really exciting to see other people reading for nonfiction November and kind of getting some ideas from them um, because I was starting to get more in the mode of I should read more nonfiction and this was a really great month for that for me and then the election happened and my desire to read or listen to nonfiction got a little bit reduced and I kind of sought solace in a lot of romance. So I've already put together one big huge video on a lot of the romance novels that I read this month. Um, there are some additional ones that I'm going to talk about today and I will do another kind of follow up more lengthy romance reading discussion. According to my Fitbit, I just walked 10,000 steps. I just like move my hands a lot and so Fitbit is like, whoa, you're so active. And it's really like, no, I just move my hands a lot. So for these, this kind of ranking that I'm going to attempt to do today, um, I'm going to have four different categories. First is DNF, the books, book, whatever that I just couldn't finish. Second is going to be the books that I'm like meh on. They're not bad, they just maybe weren't like that great either to me. Uh, then it's going to be the books that I liked. These are books that, yeah, I liked. They're not necessarily like completely changing my world or anything, but I'm super glad I read them and I would totally recommend them to people. Then my last category is books that I like absolutely loved. One of the things, I, I don't like to buy books unless I know that I love them. So unless I've already read that book or I know I love that author, I don't buy many books without having read them beforehand. So this is just an indicator that at some point I may purchase these books because I love them so much. So between like versus like absolutely loving, uh, there's not necessarily a huge difference. It's not necessarily that the, the books that I loved are better than the books that I liked. It's just that for me they were maybe more personally resonant in some kind of way. So first the book that I did not finish this month. This was uh, The Rebel Pirate by Donna Thorland and this is the sequel to The Turncoat which I posted a review of and I actually really enjoyed The Turncoat. Um, these are historical fiction books set during the American Revolution and I was really excited for The Rebel Pirate because pirates, especially lady pirates, but I just found, I realized really quickly that this was going to be one of those cases where Donna Thorland kind of reiterates the same romantic structure in her, like between her main characters and I that was actually one of the things I didn't like about the turncoat. I love everything else like she builds up really good settings, she bring, builds up really interesting facets of the American Revolution that you might not know about. In this case again, pirates. But I just didn't really feel like sticking around for two characters who are super insta-lovey. I just didn't really feel like dealing with it so I 
I never finished it. Uh, second is books I met on, um, so these are gonna all be romances. So the first is Private Arrangements by Sherry Thomas. And this is a Victorian set romance. And I was really excited about this book because it's a mending broken relationship story. Discovering that this is a type of, this is a trope of romance that I am kind of excited about. And basically it is a couple who um, immediately after their wedding moved to, uh, started living on separate continents and you find out through flashbacks that there were some events that happened that maybe made the bride come off as less, as a little bit ma manipulative to make the wedding happen. I, I really liked the characters but the story itself and the dynamic between them just wasn't that exciting. I kind of just sped through it to see that they end up together and that was kind of it. Next in this category is the Cyclone series by Courtney Milan. Um, these I read Trade Me and Find Me. These are set uh, around a tech company and I thought both were cool because they had different interesting characters who were uh, facing a lot of challenges you don't find necessarily. Um, in a lot of books um, there's a trans character in Find Me, a hero with an eating disorder. Like it's a lot of different types of characters that you don't necessarily encounter and I like the way that Courtney Milan handled them. I just don't think that sh her writing style is for me. I don't really, the way that she engages with angst is just not, I, I don't really enjoy it. It's like, it feels almost overbearing. And the last for me was A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. So this is a fantasy romance. The, the prep, the world building in the story was great. It's based around this character who, um, she's called the Kingmaker. She's able to detect truths and lies in other people and she has a host of other powers that are bestowed upon her by different gods. And this is set in like a Greco-Roman kind of god system. Like I said, I thought the world building was really cool. I thought the characters were really cool but I just didn't like the writing style. The main character's internal voice was really annoying. Like it almost, it was almost like the, the comic strip Kathy. Like she kind of does that like act kind of thing. And I just, I found it really distracting. The ending was really abrupt and I didn't like it. There, there is gonna be a sequel. I think it's the kind of sequel that I'll read if I don't have anything else that I wanna read. And it's like on sale for 99 cents. So next up, books I liked. So again, the fact that they're not in my top most character category does not necessarily mean that they are bad books. They're actually all great books and I highly, I would definitely recommend them to people. So first is Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins. So Beverly Jenkins is a romance writer who I have not read until Forbidden and I have been meaning to because she writes a lot of romances with black characters which is again not necessarily a super common theme kind of in mainstream romance and she writes a lot of historicals which I've been getting increasingly into. Uh, Forbidden is set in the west. So a young woman named Eddie she is going west and is robbed along the way and gets stuck in this and gets stuck, stuck in this mining town and she meets Ryan Ryan Fontaine um, who is what she thinks is a white man who's super rich. Ryan is actually a black man who is passing for white and it's a really fascinating book for their for this setup. Um, I, I haven't really did, like read any romances like that. I did find it to be kind of understated as far as romances go. It's a story where most people are acting like mature adults and are not being silly and there's also not any not many external hijinks that ensue because the main thing is so serious and so it was a great read but for me it was a little bit like like I said understated as far as probably what I I'm looking for in romance. The next is The Mating Game by Sally Thorne and this is a really great contemporary romance where basically two people who work together, who hate each other, find out that they're actually kind of in love with each other. I thought this was a lot of fun. It's set in a publishing house. The main character kind of has some like, I don't know, she kind of has that like irritating like working woman who doesn't have her shit together sort of quality to her but the characters were all still super amazing. I really loved the book. I really loved the humor. I thought it was a really great fun read. Uh, then was Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase, which I think is probably a classic of the Regency romance genre. It was one of those stories where two people end up married together because the woman caught in potentially compromising scenarios with the man. It's a lot of fun. I was not expecting the humor with it. I thought the main characters uh, were both really funny. I really liked how it engaged with different parts of the story like uh, the hero's bastard son, um, which was not something I expected a romance to do. 
After this was Dark Wild Night by Christina Lauren. This is uh, this is like another contemporary. This was a this is a comic book writer um, heroine who is in love with her comic store owner friend. They met because they got married in Vegas on during a drunken night um, with a bunch of their friends and separated, but um, have since had lingering fe feelings for each other and. Uh, so this is one of those friends to lovers stories, and I think it was just these are characters, especially the heroine who's undergoing some major changes in her life, and so seeing how that complements um, the ongoing romance was really interesting, and seeing how she learned that like her ideas about romance and how how to balance them with her life are maybe not what she originally understood, and so she has to go through that learning process. So next is the Washington uh, biography by Ron Chernow. So I started listening to this I think in October, and I really really enjoy it. I think Ron Chernow has a really great gift for bringing these like kind of you know flat like myths to life like we think of George Washington as the founding father for me that's kind of been all he is and I felt I really felt like his biography b brought up a lot of the different aspects of the his personality that were challenging and also perfect for becoming the first president of this country I think I've been doing so much reading with related to the American uh, Revolution, both nonfiction and fiction, and I feel like through both forms, I've gotten so much more engagement with what it took to bring this revolution to to fruition and to also bring this country to fruition, and I, I feel much more engaged with our country's history in a way. I feel more connected to it. And last for this category of books that I liked, and this is I Remember You by Yersa Sergadarder. So this is an Icelandic crime slash horror novel that I will hopefully do a review for. Um, but I've talked about this in quite a few videos. I really enjoyed this. This was super terrifying. I would read this like on the T and I would be okay because it would be like daylight out. And then I would like get home and just read it like right there. And then I would have to turn on all the lights in my apartment to be able to go to sleep, which is not great for my electricity bill, but it's super great for entertainment. It's set kind of on this isolated island off the coast of Iceland and a bunch of people like a, a few friends are going there to fix up a cabin when there's no one else there which is the ultimate like no don't do it don't open the door don't go into the basement don't go into the dark thing scenario like you would think don't go to the isolated island off the coast of Iceland when it's cold when there's no one else around like that seems like common sense but they all go there and then shit happens. And there's also this simultaneously weaving story that's more of a crime story where this doctor in a nearby town is, in is helping with the investigation of a woman who committed suicide who turns out is actually kind of obsessed with the disappearance of his son. And the linking of these two stories is just super well done. Last core category. So these are the things that I liked so much that I would say I love them and might one day buy them. So first I just have to say Sarah McLean is my new favorite romance author. Everything I read from her is, I'm just super happy with it. Like some of her stub summaries, I'll read them and I'll be like, eh, well, this sounds okay. And then I like actually read the book and I am so happy. I just think she writes really great characters, really great dialogue, really awesome dynamics between them, like a lot of good, like, healthy distaste but also lingering attraction. I just really really like her writing. So the books of hers that I read this past month, um, I read two of her books in her Scandal and Sex Scoundrel series. So these are The Rogue Not Taken and A Scott in the Dark. Um, I'm not going to get too much in the summaries. Basically the premise of the series are women who are going through scandals and then the guys who are scoundrels who they kind of run into and I really love both of these. They're so much fun. I am super super impatiently waiting for the next book which is not going to come out until June um, but this is a Mending Broken Relationships book and it features some of the characters who have appeared and have um, I'm just so excited. Next up is another author who is kind of new to me for romance and this is Joanna Shoup. So I read two series of hers. One is Wicked Deceptions. Which I think the premise of this series can be boiled down to these are relationships that are kind of initially built on some form of lie um, but that are made to become healthy. I really enjoyed all the books in this series. I thought the characters again all super well done. I also read her 
uh, Knickerbocker series, which is set during the Gilded Age, so I've read Magnate and Baron. I haven't read Tycoon yet, which is a novella, um, but I will read that soon. Um, and she has another book coming out in January, which I'm super excited for, um, which is also, I think, supposed to be a Mending Broken Relationship one. So 2017 is going to be a jackpot year for me for this new trope that I'm apparently super fond of. But yeah, I really like her Knickerbocker series. That time period is not one that I've read a lot of stories set during. The next two are books that I have not reviewed yet or covered um, their authors in any way. Um, so first is We Were Feminist Once by Andy Zeisler, and hopefully I will have a review for this because I really, really enjoyed it. Um, this So Andy Zeisler is the one of the founding editors of Bitch Magazine, and We Were Feminist Once is actually a nonfiction ser series of essays about uh, different ways, kind of different forms of interaction between pop culture and feminism and also the surrounding conversations. Having that kind of conversation about pop culture and feminism is always super fascinating to me. I am super obsessed with anything that involves combining trashy entertainment or even slightly non-trashy entertainment with like bigger ideas. I, I, I would highly recommend We Were Feminists if you're looking for any kind of pop culture slash feminist like literature. I think the, the essays are super accessible. I think her ideas are really interesting and I just was, was super into it. And last is Blind Spot, um, which is a historical fiction novel written by Jane Kamensky and Jill Lepore. This is set before the American Revolution and it's really interesting. It's kind of romance. I don't think they really marketed it as that. Um, and it is a series of just kind of like newspaper clippings that cover different things that are going on but the main story is driven by two different characters the two main characters so one is um samuel jameson who is a painter who is a he's trying to evade some debts and ends up in boston and then the other is uh narrator is fanny easton a disgraced woman from kind of an upper class boston family who has disguised herself as a boy um and is trying to become samuel jameson's painter apprentice. Their voices are super well done. I really really love this book. I, I though I, I do have to issue some caveats and I'll get more into this in my review um, but I do feel like the first two thirds of this book was really 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 good. The last third was kind of weak. Like if the last third of the book was like the entirety of the book this would be a meh book for me. Um, but I, the first two thirds was just so strong for me and I really loved their voices of the characters. I, the humor was super great that in the world that they built out, this like pre-American Revolution America is just so well done that I, I, I would totally want to buy this book in the future. Let me know what you think of the books I talked about, what you think of this format, if you have other suggestions for this conundrum of reviews versus monthly wrap-up. I kind of like this. This was kind of fun. Um, and yeah, bye.